probably at the office. Yes, probably. found them yet. No, we know where they are and what they're driving. Yeah. A van. They traded in their car for a van. So the game plan now is to start checking every motel parking lot, you know, one by one. Come on, Steele. Well, look, it shouldn't be hard to locate a van with Georgia license plates. This time of year is going to stick out. It's going to be easy. I don't care whether it's easy or whether it's hard. The next time I hear from you, you better be telling me you found them. Well, sure, Mr. Scott. Is that clear? Sure. And no excuses. Hey, how much you got? Uh, I've got 1,500 in this pile. 700 here, that makes 2,200, give or take a dollar. I brought all I had on hand. 740 should be there. I hope that'll help. Oh, man, it helps. Uh, every dollar helps. Gets them a little bit more gas. Takes them another step out of reach. Yeah, listen, uh, what about the medicine? Did you bring it with you? Yeah, I've got it right here, but it has to be given by injection. Ah, that's no problem. My, uh, my mom was a diabetic. I used to give her injections all the time. All right, listen. These are the instructions. Okay. Now, this is Jerry's medical file. Just in case. Well, that must have taken some maneuvering. Yeah, I want to talk about now. In case that antibiotic doesn't work, You'll be able to get a doctor with that. Yeah, well, uh, how long should I give it? Give it 16 hours. That's time for two injections. After that, I wouldn't wait too long. Well, yeah. What if he gives me uh, trouble about, uh, you know, taking him to a doctor or something? Well, if that doesn't work, to tell you the truth, uh, he'll be in no shape to argue. Yeah, I guess. Be careful, okay? <laughs> okay. Uh, no problem. Hey, look. Call me. Tell me what's going on. This is my friend. Hey, Sandy. Take care of yourself. Now, don't I always? Continuing story of Another World. The first part of Another World is brought to you by Downey, the fabric softener that makes your clothes smell April fresh as it softens them. And the three little pigs danced all around the room. Then they settled down and lived happily ever after in a strong brick house with a thick floor and chimney. And that's the end of the story. You want me to read it again, I bet. And I'm not going to do it. I've got some things I've got to do. Sweetie, come here. You know, you know, I'm never going to leave you again, I promise, okay? Children up for their juice now? Yes, Louise. Come here. Go with um, Louise now, okay? And I'm not going to go anywhere without yeah. you, I promise. All right? Okay. Look, Katie. Man, the old man. We'll have some nice juice. Yes, we will. It's all right. No one said this was going to be easy. No, I know that. It's just for a minute there. It seemed as though everything was back to normal. You still plan on telling him that you're leaving him? Or have you changed your mind? 
I can stay here. No. If it's going to be hard on you... No, I have to tell him all by myself. It's going to be bad enough to tell him it will be awful if you're here. Even if it means protecting you from his threats? Well, that just won't work anymore. Everything's different now. I know what I want. Do you? Yes. And you didn't know that before last night? I... I wouldn't admit it to myself. I couldn't. Because of his threats? Well, now I won't be around to hear them anymore. Yes, but still... You're gonna have to be prepared when they come again, and they're gonna come again. You can count on that. You know how he feels about his child? I mean, I'm just now starting to realize what sort of force it is in your life. But I love them, too. He can't take them away from me. He can't give up Amanda without a fight, either. It always comes down to a fight over the children, doesn't it? Well, if he wants a fight, he'll get one. But he won't get Amanda. She needs me. The courts will give her to me. Look, I would like to be the one to say yes. But Mac is going to have a strong team of lawyers on his side. And you better be ready to go to battle. It won't be the first time. I'll fight him if I have to, and I won't stop until I win. What can I do for you? Just be there for me. You don't have to ask. I'll be there, no matter what. You will, won't you? It won't be long, I promise. Good. I don't want to waste any time. But I'll wait. No matter what. Four ten Jefferson. Sixty four ten Jefferson. Sixty four ten Jefferson. Jerry, mm. baby. Right. Oh, you gotta get moving lots of miles. No, no, no. That's all right, baby. I know it's okay. Now listen, I'm gonna leave you for a little while, all right? But I'll be back as soon as you know it, okay? Are you gonna be okay? It's so hot. Yes, I know, baby. But I'm gonna get something to make you all better. I promise you. I'll bring you something to make you feel better, okay? <sighs> the one? You see the van anywhere? No. Nah, I'll go check with the clerk. Listen, I was afraid I missed you. I thought maybe you met the wrong plane. No, no, I was even here a flight, one flight earlier, just to make sure. So how is it? Oh, uh, Jerry's not so good. Did you bring the medication? Yeah, I've got it right here. Come on, let's get going. No, wait. I'm not going anywhere. Just... 
Give me the medication, then you go back to Bay City. Hey, there's no way I'm going back. Sandy, please, I don't want to argue with you. Great, then don't. Look, you need help. That's what I came for, to help you. Now, look, we're wasting time. Look. What is the matter with you and Joey, anyway? What are you talking about? Well, you're always trying to play hero or something. Come on, we're wasting time. Look, Rick said that Jerry needed this medicine badly, and he needs it now. So do we go, or do we stand here and argue? We go. All right. What is it, Jess? I've been hearing a name bandied around a lot lately. That of a young man who heroically rescued James Frame and Mac Corey from their little disaster. Sandy Alexander. Does that name ring a bell with either of you? Well, let me see. Sandy Alexander. Well, the name has a definite ring. The reason for that, Jordan, is that Sandy Alexander is the young man Ilsa's been looking for. Ilsa? Yes, Ilsa. Sandy took a very important little book from her office. Oh, wait a minute. It's all coming into focus now. He's the one that took Tracy. Ugh, it's unimportant, nothing. We obviously have a little problem with the boy. First of all, the boy's from Vegas, right? Yeah, all right. Well, I don't uh, get the point. Oh, you will, you will. And soon. Someone else is from Vegas. I wonder if anyone in this room can tell me who. Don't tell me that neither of you can make the connection. Am I going to have to tell you? Our little songbird, Melissa Needham, is from Vegas. Oh, right, right. I don't know what I was thinking of. I've been wondering about that myself lately, Jordan. Oh, I'm sorry. Just I've, I got a lot of things on my mind these days. A lot of excess baggage. If you ask me. But back to the point. For the grand prize, can either of you tell me if Melissa Needham knows of Sandy Alexander's presence in our fair city? No takers on that one either? If she does know, I'm sure that Ilsa would like to know why she hasn't said anything. Wouldn't you agree? Oh, sure. Sure, Jess. <laughs> uh, but uh, personally, I, I don't think Melissa knows the guy is here. Why would you risk that deduction, Jason? Well, because she's been busy, terribly busy, at, at the connection, singing all night, uh, at the sporting life, uh, uh, putting up the escort service. Uh, when would she have time, Jess? She wouldn't even have a chance to meet him. Now that you've so obligingly stuck out that neck of yours, let's hope you're right, Mr. Dunlap. Because if you're not, our little songbird could have a lot of trouble from Ilsa. Thanks a lot. Are you here? Yeah, a couple matching their description. Just checked into room 34. How did you manage to get him to give you that, though? When you got a security badge, you can get any kind of dope you want. You ready? Oh, I think that just might be. Let's go. <laughs> Turned up on my doorstep. I'm sorry we didn't call first, but we thought it would be better if we came in person. Yeah, we, we thought you'd understand. Well, from the looks of you, it must be good news for a change. <laughs> I think it is, yes. Well, can I get you some lunch or anything? Uh, no, no, I think we should talk first. All right. We just wanted to ask you a question. Well, please do. I'm filled with suspense. <laughs> okay, here goes. Uh, Mom. Yes, yes. <laughs> we, we just kind of wanted to know if, um, how you'd feel about being the mother of a bride. You're getting married. How did you guess? <laughs> oh, well, I'm so happy. Thank you. Oh, I'm uh. so happy. <laughs> oh. Oh, I think I'm going to cry. Mom, please don't. <laughs> All right. But I think I should say something. Like what? Well, I know something wise, motherly, <clears throat> such as. I think I should say something to Rick. Oh, Mom. No, no, not really. No, I think I should say something like, um, Rick. Mm hmm don't you take care of my little girl, you hear? And uh, you'll have to answer to me. Mrs. Something Randolph. like that. You say anything you want, because that's fully what I intend to do. OK. 
of it. Oh, I could tell. It's just very clear that you love Marianne. <laughs> I do, I do. There's only one problem with that. Really? Yes, you were a lot easier to convince than she was. Oh. Well, I'm not surprised. <laughs> you always had a stubborn streak oh, in you. Oh, Mom. No, I'm just telling your husband to be <laughs> what you're really like. <laughs> Forewarned is forearmed. I remember that. Have you two set a date? No, we haven't set a date yet, but we'd like it to be soon. Rick knows about the baby. Well, that's good. No secrets before you start out. That's really good. So how do you feel about the baby? I feel terrific. <gasps> terrific. Oh, I'm so glad. Well, if I had any doubts before, I don't now. I know you really love Marianne. I do. One more question. What? Is it what you really want? It's what we want. More than anything. But what happened? It's just become more and more difficult for me to bear Rachel's behavior toward me. I mean, it's really exhausting emotionally. Mac, have you, have you really tried to see Rachel's side? More than tried. I think I've bent over backward to try to justify her, justify her being in St. Croix with Mitch. Mac, Rachel did not go down there to be with Mitch. Uh, he followed her down there to tell her about the accident. He couldn't have called her. How can I believe that? Certainly not now. Mac, did something else happen? Yes, she's been away for the whole past weekend. And Mitch Blake has been with her. Where? At the cabin that I gave to Jamie for a wedding present. There again, there, there must be a reasonable explanation. What could it possibly be? Have you asked her? How can I? She's still with him up there, as far as I know. Well, <clears throat> did she tell you she was going up there? No. She told Louise that she and Mitch were going to the cabin. Well, there, I mean, she was perfectly open about it. Now, does that sound like a woman who's about to deceive her husband? Hmm? Brian, I just don't know anything anymore. Well, why did they go up there together? Louise says she was looking for Jamie, that he wasn't answering his phone, and she was worried about him. And you don't buy it? Well, Mac, it sounds like a reasonable explanation to me. Oh, come on, Brian. How long would she have to be there in the cabin before she realized that Jamie wasn't there? An entire weekend? <laughs> so there you have it. Oh, but Mac, I really think you should give Rachel the opportunity to explain herself. I mean, for your own peace of mind. Why should I? There's no way she can explain spending a weekend with him, or she would have called me to tell me why. That brings me to why I'm here. I want you to start proceedings for a divorce as soon as possible. of another world. Dawn of the Family, today at 4.30. And now, the next part of Another World. Oh, Larry, come in. Close the door. You wanted to see me? Yeah, I do. Sit down. 
Well, I'm a little antsy right now. I think I'll stand if you don't mind. I do mind. Watching somebody pace makes me very nervous. Something bothering you? Yeah. I'm worried about Blaine. I still haven't heard from her. Well, you know, it's um, not like Blaine to stay away like this and not call or anything. You think so? Yeah, you know, she's the kind of girl who likes to keep in touch with people. And um, at least I know she calls in eventually. My opinion exactly. That's why I'm worried. Well, I hope she's all right. You'd, uh, you'd tell me if you knew where she was, wouldn't you? She hasn't called me, Jordan. Doesn't that worry you? Well, it would, under ordinary circumstances. Explain that, would you? You know, Blaine and I are not on the best of terms right now. I think I'm about the last person that she wants to talk to. Uh, I don't buy that. Well, look, suit yourself. Jordan, she hasn't forgiven me since I broke it off with Clarice. Yeah. Well, maybe you're right. But, uh, she'll be back soon enough. Are you counting on that? I am. I got my men out looking for her now. They'll find her. They never come back empty-handed. Yeah, well, I, I hope you do find her. I want to see her back here at home where she belongs. Just one thing, you. Yeah? I hope you're being straight with me. Well, what do you mean? Well, I just hope that for your sake, you, you wouldn't hold out on your sister's whereabouts from me. Look, Jordan, I told you I didn't know where she was, you know? You're going to have to take my word for that. I will. For now. One word of caution, though. If you do find out where she is, I expect you to let me know immediately. Drop those guns. Throw them on the bed. So, now what, Grove? Move away from the door. Move it! I'm not feeling so good, huh, kid? Move back. Hurts you to move, doesn't it, kid? Get back. Get back. Tell where those chairs are. How long have you been out of the hospital, huh? How long, huh, kid? You had that accident, what, three, four, maybe five weeks ago, right? Still all right, kid? Stay still. You're not gonna make it, kid. So why don't you give me that little toy you're playing with? Look at you! Are you reeling? How long do you think you're going to be able to stand up and point that gun at us, huh? Get the gun! All right, get up! And don't make a false move. Kid? So cold. Tell you what, Eddie, you run downstairs. I'll keep watch here, wait for the little lady to show up. Tell Scott that we've got what he's looking for. They would have called us and let us know. Yeah, well, I can think of a couple of reasons why maybe they haven't called. All right, name one I'm willing to be reassured. Well, they probably don't want to get to take the risk of being tracked down. <laughs> you know what I mean? And if they call us, they risk that? I'm sorry, Joey, but I don't buy it. I mean, I know Jerry, and I believe that he would call me if he were able somehow. I don't know. I do. Besides, I have other reasons on my side to worry. What? Russ says Jerry may be in danger from this operation. 
Wait, wait, wait. So I thought Russ said that everything was all right with him. He, it was. It was fine. But he has to take it easy. And if he overdoes it, he has, there's a very high risk of infection. Oh, great. That's great. Oh! I wish I could help. I don't, I don't know what I could say to you. I really don't. It's okay. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Did you hear? If you think of something, I'll be glad to hear it. All right. Hey, you guys, how you doing? Well, I guess I don't have to ask how you are. You guys a little wired with an extra circuit, huh? Yeah. Well, What's we, going on? We uh, have something to tell you. Yeah? Yeah. Well, good, maybe we could use some good news. Well, this is good news. Marianne's just agreed to become Mrs. Eric Holloway. <laughs> never ends on days of our lives. Oh, Dad. Alex is overjoyed after telling Jessica she's his daughter and urges Sister Marie to do the same. You don't think she's going to be confused knowing that her mother is a nun? Will Sister Marie confess the truth? Are you my mother? This week on Days of Our Lives. That's great. Let me be the first to congratulate you. That's, <laughs> this is the girl that you need, a distraction to get you away from work now. Oh, you know I like I mean? that being called a distraction. It's a distraction. <laughs> You're awfully quiet. Doesn't my big sister approve of, of this alliance? <laughs> I guess you know what you want. <laughs> yes, I do. Well? Well, what? Well, aren't you going to join Joey in, in wishing us well? Of course. I'm wishing both. The very best. Just to be. Oh, I wish you the best. Thanks, kid. Well, <laughs> I hate to break this party up. I gotta get back. I gotta see if uh, Bunny and Jerry they might call. Okay? Yeah, I hope okay. they do. Yeah, so I'm I. sure they're all right. Congratulations, you guys. Thank yeah. you. All right. Bye-bye. I gotta get going, too. Okay. I got some work to do. Right. See you later. All right. Bye. Okay. Talk to you later, Steve. Bye. Bye. Okay, let's have the reasons you don't approve. Who said I don't approve? You didn't have to. It was so thick you could slice it. Okay, if you know, then why ask? You know, kid, I really don't understand you. For a long time there, you couldn't wait for Rick and I to get together. And now that you succeeded, you seem awfully sour that you did. What is it you want? Well, there is one little complication, Mary. Oh, and am I supposed to guess what that is? The baby? Rick is absolutely delighted about the baby. <laughs> I'll bet he is. Is that cynicism I hear? No, not at all. I mean, I meant it. The problem isn't with him. Oh, oh, I see. The problem's with me. What's the matter? Are my credentials suddenly tainted now that I'm pregnant? Nothing of the sort. I just wonder if you would have been so eager to marry my brother if you hadn't been pregnant with his child. Of course I would have married him. How can you even ask that? Are you sure, Marianne? Are you really sure? sure we had plenty of shoes on hand tonight. Oh, is that what you call it? Oh, this? He's just trying to cool out a little. Does it do the trick? Not always. You want one? Yeah. No, this is strictly for medicinal purposes, you understand. Mm-hmm. Right, and what's your excuse? I had a little run-in with Jordan. Ooh. So you're going to get even with him by drinking all of his good liquor. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that, but that's not a bad idea. Yeah. You're really nervous, huh? No, it's just this talk we had. But Jordan did most of the talking. Yeah. He told me he had some people out looking for Blaine and Jerry. But I guess you already know that, don't you? Yeah, of course I know that. 
don't you? I mean, what did you expect? Well, I didn't realize he was so dead set on having him come back here. Oh, come on. Don't you know, Jordan? You think an egomaniac like Jordan Scott going to let his woman get away? <sighs> and Jerry. I don't know about Jerry. Why do you say that? Because he's an undesirable commodity. I wouldn't give very much for his chances right now. I don't underestimate Jerry. Actually, he's got some help. Help? What, what, what kind of help? Sandy's gone down. Where? I don't know. Come on, Melissa, you know no, where. No, I really don't know where. All I know is that Jerry got sick and he needed some medicine and Sandy's gone down and brought it down with him. No, oh, that's just great. That's all we need is another one out there. Yeah, but this one is special. Oh, he's just a kid. Only in age, not in experience. And if anybody is going to bring Jerry and Blaine back alive, it's going to be Sandy. See that car right over there? The tan one, yeah. Yeah, it's got out-of-state plates. Oh, no. Oh, yeah. You want to bet what city it's from? It's a coincidence, Sandy. It's just got to be a coincidence. Yeah, sure it is. You just keep believing that. What are you doing? I'm not taking any chances. Uh, it's what I call insurance. You know, hindsight is no good at all, especially when you're not around to benefit from it. Now, look, you ready to go? Well, what exactly are we going to do? Okay, look, just stay right behind me and stay close, okay? Okay. Don't try to tell me you know what you're doing because you don't. I think I do. This is a very big step you're taking, you know. It's the only step I can take, Mom. Is, are you doing this out of some kind of dumb loyalty to Mitch Blake? No, I'm not. Then am I supposed to believe that you've been in love with him all along and you, you kept quiet about it because of Mac? Is that it? No, that's not it either. Then what is it? It's this whole awful year, Mom. Everything I've really believed in has let me down, and everything I've been sure of has turned out to be different. Like Mac. I was always so sure that our love could withstand anything, and it couldn't. Everything we've been through in this last year and a half, the only thing he could think of to do was to walk out on me. And the next thing he could think of was to take the baby away from me. All he could think of to do was to punish me. And then there's Mitch. I was so sure I knew he was totally bad. But that wasn't true about him. He turned out to be very gentle and very sensitive and desperately in need of someone to love. And through all of that terrible things that I went through this last year, Mac could only walk out on me, but Mitch was there for me, offering to help, offering his love. I didn't want this to happen. I would have done anything in the whole world to keep from hurting Mac. Well, you will hurt Mac. There is no getting around it. Mac has put me in this corner, Mom. He, his jealousy, his will has paved the way for this. I didn't want anything to go wrong with this marriage. I kept telling myself all these months that I just felt gratitude to Mitch, that that's all I was feeling. What have you got to be grateful to him for? Everything bad that's happened to you in the last year and a half has happened on account of Mitch Blake. Regardless of what you say, he came through for me when I really needed him. There was no reason for him to do that, and he did. So now you think you love him and you have to marry him because he's Matthew's father? No, I didn't say anything about marriage. I don't know about marriage. But I have grown to love his gentleness and his sensitivity, and I want us to raise our son together. You have another son, too. Remember that. How do you think he's going to take this? I don't know. But he's all grown up. There's nothing I can do about him. 
But this new baby needs me very badly. And I have to think of doing what's best for him, what's best for both of us. And you think that Mitch Blake is going to be better for you and Matthew than Mac is? Yes, that's what I think. Look around you, Rachel. At what, Mom? At this, at all of it, including Mac. Do you mean to tell me that you're going to give up all of this for a man like Mitch Blake? Mac has never trusted my love, Mom. And he has threatened me with his money and his power once too often. It doesn't look so attractive anymore. You've really made up your mind, haven't you? Yes, that's what I'm telling you. What about Mac? Mac has told me what he thinks. He's told me exactly what he wants. You do know that if this doesn't work out with you and Mitch the way you want it to, that there is no way that Mac will ever take you back. Yes, I know. No marriage can go through the kind of disruptions that yours has and survive. Now, if you walk away this time, there is no turning back. And you accept it? Yes. Rachel, are you sure? Yes, I have to accept it. Hey, Jordan said you were looking for me. What's up? Sandy Alexander. That name ring a bell? <laughs> Should it? Yeah, I think so. What do you know about Sandy Alexander? No, 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 no. That's my line, Melissa. You haven't played fair with me. All this time I was wondering who he was, telling you how familiar he looked to me, that I knew him from somewhere before. You didn't let on for one minute that you knew him or that I had ever met him before. I'm sorry, Jason. I just couldn't. Why not? Because Ilsa's out looking for him, and if she finds him, she's going to kill him. Oh, please. Don't over-dramatize the situation. I am not over-dramatizing this. You met Ilsa, remember? Yeah, I sure did. You know what she's capable of doing. You'll get no argument from me there. Well, then you understand my actions. I could understand, except for one thing. What? I thought we were at the point where we could trust one another. But Jason, that's what I'm doing. Practically at gunpoint. No, please, you just have to understand. This is something between me and Sandy. I just couldn't involve anybody Ma, else. Yes, so you could have leveled with me, you know. But that's what I'm doing now. Jason, I just couldn't before. I was so scared. Please. But I am leveling with you now. Can't you see that? I, I feel good that I'm being open with you. I want us to be close. I want us to trust one another. Can't you feel that? Can't you see that I'm closer to you now? Promise me something. Promise me you won't hide things from me. Alexander? I think you know the answer to that, Mr. Steele. 
You should have stayed out of this. What do you want to go getting involved? Things have nothing to do with you. So why don't you just walk on out of here? All I want is the little lady there. You know, I was just going to ask you to do the same thing. We can just keep this between the two of us. You don't understand, kid. I'm not leaving. I got a job to do, and I'm not leaving till I do it. I got time. Plenty of time. Hey, are you okay? Hey, I think this guy's another guy. But I think this guy's out cold. I don't know for how long. Some blank, kick that door open for me, would you? Hey, good girl. All right, I think that's gonna hold him for a little while, at least long enough to get us out of here. You think you can walk, my friend? Yeah, sure. Okay, yeah, let's do it. Here, Blaine, I'll get him. You got the suitcase. Come on, Jerry. Stay tuned for the conclusion of another world. I figured we put enough distance between us and Ken Steele for the time being. Just need to get some stuff out of my pack. How you doing? I'm okay. Yeah. Get some alcohol. Why don't you uh, roll up your sleeve and swab that down? What's that? Well, I'll tell you the truth, my friend. I, I don't really know. But uh, Rick guarantees that this is going to make you feel a lot better real fast. That is, if you can survive my giving it to you. It's been a while since I've done this. I go ahead and go for it. Yeah. Okay. Hang in there, my friend. Okay, now all we have to do is keep a close eye on him and check the time regularly. We'll give him another shot in about eight hours. Sandy, th thanks. Yeah, you just hang in there, buddy. We're gonna be just fine. What do we do next? Well, I guess I get back in the driver's seat and we get out of here. Where are we going? Well, one thing's for sure. Jordan Scott figured out you guys were on your way down to Florida, so he's no dummy. I guess the best thing to do is make it as hard as we can for him to track us. Us. Yeah, us. I guess I'm in this now, too. This part of another world was brought to you by Dry Formula Secret. Strong enough for a man, but made for a woman. story of another work. It's not what you think it is. Look, I don't know what I think, but I know that I want you out of here, Mom. Now! I want to talk to my wife, and I want to talk to her alone.
first part of Texas is brought to you by new Duncan Hines Cookie Mix. For a cookie... He can't stand rejection, so he's got to punish all of us. I remember... This part of another world was brought to you by Lemon Fresh Joy. Joy cleans clear down to the shine, so your everyday dishes don't look every day. Join us each weekday at this time for the continuing story of Another World.